because that's what Muslims do. They say Muhammad saw an angel in a cave. He is a new prophet. They're following him. So how do you know that this person, because that's an essential criteria, he has to come from the line of David. All the predestined dates have passed. How could the predestined dates pass if there wasn't a specific time period? Oh, so of course, there were specific dates. Okay, okay. what were but the dates? Look. You even said, oh, it's the Messiah. But then when I corrected you to say, hold on, initially you said it wasn't a human. Yeah. Now you've then kind of now become more thoughtful in terms of, yes, how do we get around it? What the oral law tells us is mm -hmm. that we will know the Messiah based on the things that he did. Okay. Okay, he, has to, he has to prove himself. We don't just accept him straight away. So when the Messiah he comes, is he himself. coming on a donkey or in the clouds? Uh, hey Soko family, uh, we're back again with Josh. I don't know, some of you may recognize him. I had a discussion with him uh, sometime last year. Uh, last summer. Yeah, last summer. He's now back, so we will hopefully have a fruitful conversation. There might, hopefully, there won't be any Hebrew Israelites to interject oh, this time and um, take their focus off their com conversation from somewhere else. So we'll continue. Last time we were talking about. Jesus being the Messiah. Wait, what? I don't think that came up at all. Well, yeah, because we, 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 we looked through um, <laughs> like Isaiah 53 Isaiah. and you said it was about Israel. Israel yeah. But I've been looking through your classical sources and you're actually incorrect about that. Oh. Ah, because there are two out of hundreds of classical sources okay. that say that it is the Messiah. So, all the other hundreds of them all say it's not the Messiah. So who so. is Jonathan ben Uzel? Ah. Jonathan bin Uziel was a student of, um, of three prophets, um, Haggai, Zechariah and Malachi. Okay. He was, he was their student and they taught him the text of what's called the Talgum on the prophets. And, um, and Jonathan bin Uziel, uh, so, so now, now this Talgum of, uh, of, on the prophets yep. is a, is a uh, is a translation of the verses of the prophets based on a principle called drush, which means that you take um, that, that you take certain uh, that, that wherever there's a grammatical problem um, in the in the words, you, you attempt to resolve that um, by by putting by making the verses flow. Um, based on certain rules of how to do this, which, are very, like which are very paraphrasing the Hebrew. It's not really paraphrasing. It's more of trying to make it flow. Okay. Um, and, um, and and this and this um, this Tawagun came directly from from the prophets themselves, who wrote down these books. When God gave over the prophecy to be written down, He gave them also an oral. Um, an oral message to, to, to known as the Targum uh, in Aramaic to, um, to to accompany the text and that was passed down orally until Jonathan Musiel said this is going to get forgotten and so he wrote it down. Okay. So this is the background to what this Targum is. And what was the name of his Targum? It's just known as the Targum. Because you have like Targum Jerusalem, Onkelos. Ah, ah. So Targum Jerusalem nobody knows where it comes from. Okay. Targum Onkelos is the same thing as the Targum of Jonathan ben Uziel, okay. except that Targum Onkelos was written down by Onkelos, and it's instead of being on the prophets, it's on the five books of Moses. And instead of coming from the, instead of God giving it to the prophets who wrote down their books, and then and then it being passed down um, like through, orally through that, and God gave it orally at, uh, at, to Moses at Mount Sinai and it was passed on orally until so, Onkelos. So do you accept all the um, Targums as part of your classical Jewish text? I do accept it as being one of the one of the interpretations given in the oral law. Okay, so I've got a, actually got a page from the Targum uh -huh. from Ben Uzel. I'm and this is his, my own, but of This course, is his uh, interpretation of Isaiah 53. Uh -huh. So we see from verse 11 and it was the pleasure of the Lord to refine and to purify the remnant of his people in order to cleanse their souls from sin that they might see the kingdom of their Messiah that their son and daughters might multiply and prolong their days and those that keep the law 
of the Lord shall prosper through his pleasure. So you said this was about Israel, but we clearly uh, see... Yeah, so as I said before, yes. the majority of classical interpretations okay. of, this, of this chapter have the servant being the people of Israel because the, the, the easiest read of the chapters of Isaiah is to, is to say that each servant is the people of Israel because so many servants are specifically um, said to be the people of Israel. But now there are two inter there are two sources, yes. the Targum as you mentioned and also yes. the Midrash Tanfuma, okay. that both identify this servant as the Messiah. You are correct. And Jonathan Ben Uzo, if I'm correct, is one of your most renowned yeah. sages. He is one they of said them. when he used to write the Torah, birds would fly above ah, yeah. and they would burn up. Yes. yes. So therefore we're going into his Targum and you said he was taught by the prophet. So now you're yes. saying there's other interpretations. Of course, there are many. But then and one of your most renowned, but one of your most renowned sages has said this is about the Messiah. We so have many renowned sages. Now I'm not, I'm not about to tell you that the Targum is wrong. Heaven forbid. Well, I've, I've obviously of asked you already, not. and you said it's, it's acceptable. It's completely acceptable, yes. completely correct. But what you need to know is in Judaism, yes. okay, when it comes to the it comes to the oral law. There are many, many, many things in, okay. in the oral law that contradict each other. Okay. And um, and we have a concept that, um, that that although physically speaking, there can we in our in our human minds can only accept that there's one truth, one, only one true way of, of understanding the text. Okay. Um, the, the true spiritual reality is that all of these things are so correct. then why do so you all reject of them what he correct. says when I he don't puts do, I don't reject so it so then however, you but you however, said it was about Israel and we however, now have a conflict as I said as I said as I said that there are, are parts of the oral law that okay. are saying this is Israel okay. there are parts of the oral law that are saying this is the Messiah okay now the uh, now the way we look at this is the vast majority okay. of the of the of the of the bear, of the carriers of the oral law, i.e., the sages, okay. were saying this is the people of Israel, okay. and one of them, or two, two of them, were saying it's the Messiah. And therefore, in an ordinary debate, I'm go obviously going to just make things simple and go with the majority. So, who was the greatest scholar simple. then, Jonathan Benuzi? It's not for me to judge. Well, he's one of your greatest. He's one of the very greatest. He's one so of that's why I'm saying, if you're saying it's about Israel, give me someone who you would say is on his level, because you did say he was taught by the prophets. Yeah. So if he was taught by the prophets, I don't think they would have incorrectly taught him for him to put that. As I just said, as I just said, they are both correct. Both interpretations are correct. Okay. They are both correct. In one aspect of what the verses are doing, it's talking yeah. about the Messiah. And but, in one aspect, it's talking about the people of Israel. But then the last time we spoke, you there said are, it was there, solely there, about there, Israel. Some verses are talking about the Messiah, and some are talking about the nation of Israel, and some are talking about other nations. And so it's very, very complex. But the classical interpretation of Judaism is that this is the nation of Israel. And it's backed up by many, many places all over the Hebrew Bible, where the servant of God is clearly identified as the nation of Israel. <laughs> okay, now if you go to Genesis 49.10, okay. I'd like you to give me your explanation on that. All right. This is the blessings, right? Uh, no. No, yes it is. <laughs> this isn't the blessings. I'll start from verse 8. Okay. You, O Judah, your brothers shall praise, your hands shall be on the nape of your foes, your father's sons shall bow low to you. Judah is a lion's whelp. O pray, my son, have you grown? He crouches, lies down like a lion, like the king of beasts who dare rouse, who dare rouse him. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from the between his feet, so that tribute shall come to him, and the homage of people be his. Okay. His tethers, uh, should I finish the blessing? Or oh, yeah, go ahead. He tethers his ass to a vine, his ass's foal to a choice vine. He washes his garments in wine, his robe in blood of grapes. His eyes are darker than wine, his teeth are whiter than milk. So now, I'll ask you to explain why is that verse problematic? Or is it, is that, or is it other parts of that chapter that's problematic? And so let's have a look at specifically verse 10, you want to know what's problematic? Yeah. So first of all, what exactly does it mean a scepter will not depart from Judah? That seems to be a very ambiguous and very cryptic statement. Okay. It's not entirely clear what it's talking about here. Okay. Especially since it doesn't actually say scepter, this seems to be a a allegorical translation which they the JPS usually do. The word here in Hebrew is shevet, which okay. means rod 
The rod shall not pass it. It shall not. Okay. Shall not What's the rod symbolic of? So the rod, according to this allegorical translation, is a scepter. Okay, of Judah, which okay. signifies its kingship. Yes. Could be. Okay. So what is the interpretation on this verse? Are you aware? There are many, and I don't know them all off by heart. Okay. Shall we go into the Talmud and have a look? Okay. Or, shall I can, or can I explain it to you? Oh, do you know who Shiloh is? Ah, we have one down here. Yeah. Who's Shiloh? Shiloh, instead of Shiloh, tribute to him. Following the Midrash, meaning of Hebrew uncertain. Literally, until he comes to Shiloh. Okay. That is, yeah, so that's why it translated here, so that tribute shall come to him because Shai. No, it's tribute. As I say, it's very cryptic. It's very cryptic. It's very cryptic, cryptic to Jews, but not very cryptic to the no, Christians. Of course, because Christians have a predefined goal as to what they want to come out of it. They want to find Jesus. We're not looking for Jesus. We are just trying to understand what could this possibly mean. And so we're going to look at all the different possibilities using the rules that God gave to us as to how to interpret. There are 13 rules of how to do what's called a drush. There's, but, but that's only one way of interpreting. There's four ways of interpreting. Okay, one's so called Peshat, one's called Jush, This one's is called Jebus, from. The, let's go into your Talmud, Sanhadrin, five eight six, and it says, oh, like it. "This is as it is taught in the Baraita. The verse states: the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet until Shiloh comes." The term Shiloh is understood as a reference to the Messiah. Now, I'm going to ask you. Just finish it off. Oh, yeah. just finish okay. it off. And they, therefore, therefore the verse is interpreted as, as delineating, delineating the, the authority, authority of, of Jewish rulers during the exile before the Messiah comes. Very interesting. So, there's other pe people who confirm it's about the Messiah too. So now we have a timeline. So it says. There's something, the rod shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh comes. Now, what happened in the first century with King Herod the Great, with the Roman Empire? Why don't you tell me, paperboy? So, we can see in the first century that King Herod, uh, obviously he died, and then Israel became more of a, um, a Roman Empire. Empire, where the governance, the colony of the Roman Empire, yes, and yes. the power of capital punishment was taken away from the Sanhedrin. Yes. Yes. So therefore, and then we see the, the eth fact, eth the eth we see the ethnarchs. Away from themselves. Yeah, yeah, and we see the ethnarchs coming in. His sons were more um, eth eth ethnarchs. Let me give. Oh, you. the exilarchs. Yeah, that's yeah. Sorry. Ah, yes. yes. So the root we see this correlates that in the first century. We see now the rod has departed because the last king was King Herod's children. So we do not have any kings since then. So therefore, the Genesis is telling you that Shiloh has to come before the rod or the kingship is taken away from Judah. Because the line always came from David, yes? One second. Does that make sense or not? Because you're having to understand what is the scepter. Because if it's until Shino comes, yes. Ah, I see what you've done here. Mm. You see, until Shino will come is the second half of the verse. If you look at how the verse is punctuated, okay, and I'm sure you can read Hebrew. The uh, the the Esmachto, which is the the Hebrew equivalent of a full stop. The, the, it's basically the halfway point of the verse. Okay. You have the first part of the verse and the second part of the verse. Okay. It's after nor the ruler's staff from between his feet. And then until Shiloh will come to him, or some tribute will come to him, whatever interpretation we go with, it's already in the second part. So you're telling me it's going back onto the first bit of the verse, the seven shall not depart from Judah. Right? Yes. So it's telling you when to Shiloh when to expect Shiloh. And if Shiloh is the Messiah, how do, you, how do you know that it's telling you when to expect? Shiloh? Because it says the scepter shall not depart, nor a lawgiver. Doesn't say lawgiver. Okay, give me your. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Yeah. Or the ruler's staff from between his. Or the ruler's staff. That's fine. The translation I'm going by says the 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 uh, the law. I, mean, yeah. I, do, I do see where that comes from. The word so, is not Yeah, so it's, it can be translated as lawgiver. So we can go with your interpretation. So it's giving you a timeline. Now let's go to Malachi 3.1. Oh, jumping around. 
Yeah, these two go hand in hand. Everything goes hand in hand. Let's go from verse 17. You have wearied the Lord with your talk. But you ask, with what have we wearied him? By saying, all who do evil are good in the sight of the Lord, and in them he delights, or else where is the God of justice? Behold, I am sending my messenger to clear the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek shall come to his temple suddenly. As for the ancient of the covenant that you desire, he is already coming. And who can endure the day of his coming? Who can hold out when he appears? He is like a smelter's fire, and like a uh, fuller's light. He shall act like a smelter and perjurer of silver, and he shall purify the descendants of Levi, of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, so that they shall present offerings in righteousness. Then the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem shall be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of yore and in the years of old. But first I will step forward to contend against you, and I will act as an Olympus accuser against those who have no fear of me, who practice sorcery, who commit adultery, who will swear falsely, who cheat neighbours of their hire, and to subvert the cause of the widow, orphan, and stranger, says the Lord of hosts. So who's the messenger of the covenant? What, and what is this verse the talking about? Of the messenger yeah. of the covenant. Yeah, yeah. 3 1. So you obviously read quite a bit. But yeah. so 3 1 it says, a messenger is coming to prepare the way for who? Hold on, I'm telling you, a messenger to clear the way before me. God. Yeah. So is that God literally? So you believe this verse talking about God is coming? Yeah. Okay. So then. A messenger. Hold on a second, what do you mean God is coming? Yeah, when and give me the interpretation of this verse. First of all, I'm not, I do not have the authority to interpret. Well, basic, just based on the... Let's just see. Yeah. I'm sending my messenger to clear the way before So it says God's going to visit the temple, yes? God's going to visit the temple. The Lord whom you seek shall come to his temple. Yes. So it's saying God's literally going to come to the temple. Well, you know, this is a, uh, what do you call the word? An anthropomorphism, an anthropomorphism, like you have the whole way through the That's Bible. That's fine, but the, what, the point I'm getting at is that the temple does not exist anymore. So when so was this, this must, fulfilled? So this must be a prophecy that the temple's going to be rebuilt. So you think the temple's going to be rebuilt? Of course it will. Okay. It says in Ezekiel. So what happens when the temple's re rebuilt? Well, then the, the divine presence will once again rest in the, in the temple. And the Messiah will come? And of course, the Messiah is a prerequisite to the temple coming. So the temple... The Messiah is going, to, is going to be in charge of the construction of the temple. So the Messiah comes and then the temple is rebuilt? Oh, well, yeah. Okay. So we can either t look at this as your perspective, because we clearly see from your uh, rabbinical text that especially Maimonides, Maimonides, ah, Maimonides. Maimonides, he said that the timelines for the Messiah have passed. Now, as a Jew, you now Where just pray. Uh, let me see. Uh, you enjoy yourself on safari? Of course, of course. I'm not entirely sure what your goal is with any of this, to be perfectly honest. No, but um, I'm just, we uh, just the, the getting... The you want to use for some reason, whatever, yeah. is very against you. Well, I'm just, we're just seeing what the, the development of... There's some not very nice things it says there about, uh, yeah, about there's lots Jesus. Of, there's a lot of polemics in it, but what we're trying to establish is a... Of course, against... That's why you said it doesn't say... Nice, exactly, so that's polemics against Jesus. But what we're trying to see is the evolution in rabbinical Judaism. Because, because okay, let me... Before I find that quote of... Um, <laughs> of Maimonides, it will take me a little while to find it. Because what we're seeing is sometimes when we look at your earliest texts, we see, for example, a progression in uh, rabbinical thinking. So, what kind of so for example, you follow the 12 articles of faith. By 13. 13, sorry. Established by who? Well, the 13 of the principles of faith are derived from a statement that Maimonides was Thank you. said and when, when did he was he live? explaining a Mishnah. When did he live? He lived in the 1100s. So the, the Jews before them, could they follow him? Well, they couldn't follow him. However, however, however. This, this 13 principles of faith yep. is just an explanation of a Mishnah. But you follow the see, 13 articles of faith established by Maimonides. The reason why we do that is yes. because the Mishnah there says that he's explaining, Maimonides is explaining, yeah. lists 13 things that, uh, that, 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 if you, that if you do not 
that if you do not believe, yes. then you have no portion in the world to come. Maimonides drives from there, and that means if you do believe even all these things, then you will have a portion. But initially, in the world to come. he wasn't accepted. He was kind of seen as quite a uh, radical. There were a lot of arguments about Maimonides. I would agree with you there. Okay, so therefore, as I said, we have progressiveness within Judea because if he wasn't accepted at first no, but that doesn't and mean now that he particular thing as, wasn't accepted. yes but we what I'm saying is his philosophy, also talk about this philosophy but his philosophy because you follow Maimonides his 13 articles that he established he didn't establish them he solidified them and the the Yigdat he explained did he esta solidify the Yigdat Yigdal sorry no he didn't Yigdal came from Solomon ibn Gabiral according to most opinions but he established it, solidified it. So the thinking may have been there already, but then he solidified it. Yes, what do you, what do you because say? what I'm saying is before there was a sense of um, Jews not accepting anthropomorphism, in earliest Judaism, this was not necessarily a problem. In, no, anthropomorphism is so always who, been. Who, who visited Abraham? Who visited Abraham? Yes. The, uh, the three angels. There were three angels. There were three angels that came to Abraham. Can we see? Can message. we see uh, in Gen ah. Genesis in 18, law, 18 one? Three men, of course. Let's see what it says in your Genesis eighteen yes. one. Here in Genesis, we're talking it's about three men. All right. You are correct. The Our law tells us these men were angels. Fat cheek. Oh, hello. Our, um, hello, hello. you know, our, our eternality does um, depend on this. And sorry, just remind me, what was the quote I was looking for you for, Ma Maimonides? Oh, uh, Maimonides, you said that the time of the Messiah Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the Lord appeared to him by the tabernacle of Mamre. He was sitting at the entrance of the tent as the day grew hot. Looking up, he saw three men standing near him. As soon as he saw them, he ran from the entrance of the tent to greet them. As bows the ground, he said, "My Lord." Wait, say the first. Say it again. Huh? Say start from the beginning. Slow, slow, Lord slow, appears slow. to him. What? The, the Lord. Who's the Lord? Who? The Lord. God. So, but you said there was angels. three angels. Yeah. You were. I didn't understand what you meant. I thought you meant who came to him. Yeah. I.e. Yeah. Yeah. the three men who came to him. Yeah. And that's, I thought you were talking about them. So you said the Lord the appeared to him. Yeah. Then three angels came. You know what the phrase in the Bible, the Lord appeared to him, means, right? Which is? It means that there was a prophecy. That God came to him in a prophecy and told him something. So God gave, says the Lord appeared to him, so you're saying that's a prophecy. What was the prophecy? Well, the prophecy is going to be over a second. Ah, well this is actually an argument. Okay. Some who say that in verse 3, mm -hmm. no, not... Sorry, not that verse, one second. Ah, there are some who say that verse 10 mm -hmm. is, it is the prophecy. And there are some who disagree, and they say... Everyone agrees mm -hmm. that the way that the narrative of the Bible, the way that God has, present, has presented this, is yeah. that it presents that a prophecy happened, Okay. And then it interrupts itself. It interrupts itself? Yes. Okay. And this will need further explanation. Okay. okay the old law. What um, was the prophecy? So some say that where it says, and he said, I will return to you at, um, at, at uh, uh, next year, um, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. Some who say that that's the prophecy, and some who say that it only returns back to the prophecy at, um, at verse 20, where it says, The outrage of Sodom and Gomorrah is so great, and their sin so grave. I will go down to see whether they have acted all together according to the outcome that has reached me. If not, I will take note. So, I mean, it seems that you're reading, you're going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards, and this is why it seems, it seems a very, very kind of complicated way I of know. interpreting the scripture I and know. it's quite linear but then you're saying That's people don't even but then you're saying no one even agrees so some are saying it means one thing others say it means another thing so I know. as i said before there are different different opinions in every almost every stage of the oral law okay and the reason for that is because there's not just one 
one truth really. There's, there's a, the okay. turret is a 70 faceted. So, thing. so after this story, the three men eat with Abraham. Two of them go to Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes. And then one, obviously, of the angels is not there because two went to Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. So let's say if we go to Genesis 19:24. 19:24. So it says, right, so verse 23, as the sun rose upon the earth and Lot entered Zoe, the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah sulfurous fire from the Lord out of heaven. He annihilated those cities in the entire plain, and all the inhabitants of the cities and the vegetation of the, of the ground. Lot's wife looked back, and she thereupon turned into a pillar of salt. So now my question to you is this, where did the third angel go? Ah, the, the third angel, if you want to know, went back up to heaven. Show me from scripto. I'm going to tell you. So you were just presuming he went to no, heaven? No, the law tells us he went up to heaven. So the Hebrew Bible doesn't say he does? But the, the written but the, law doesn't say it. Okay. The written law leaves it as a, as a mystery. As a, okay. And the, and the law answered this mystery, as okay. it always does. It always answers these sort of so questions So now this verse that we read... See, you, you, you're really thinking like a, like a Talmudic scholar here. Hey. You're asking a question on the verse, yep. and it cut, turned out the oral law actually answered it for you. Isn't so, great? well, it seems like the... The, he the Hebrew Bible doesn't answer it, but then you have to go to the, that's the, why, the that, Mishnah. That's why the God gave us the written law and okay. the oral law. So, the oral who law the so law. we see there's two lords in that passage. No, no, there's only one lord. Here what, there is well, the lord let's let's yeah. read that again. Let's read that passage again. What does it say? The Lord reigns upon Sodom and Gomorrah, yeah. sulfurous fire yeah. from the Lord Wait. out of heaven. Say it one more time. The Lord yep. reigned upon Sodom yep. and upon Gomorrah, sulfurous fire from So God now we have God in two locations. You can't God is, as we all know, yeah. omnipresent. Oh, so you okay? So you believe that now that God was in two locations. One God was in heaven. All locations. But it didn't say God was in all. It said He rained down fire and brimstone from the Lord in heaven. Oh yes. So therefore it's identifying now in two different locations. Ah, so you have a very good question on this verse. Yes. Why does it repeat the word God? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to answer you. Don't I say don't, Lamech. I what? Okay, it doesn't matter. Lamech. Yeah, if okay, if you don't know that then it's fine. <laughs> yeah, go on. Answer oh, your own way. It seems you are withholding information. Give me your interpretation the, and I'll, no, I'll I was I'll about, give I was you. about to tell you I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Okay, it's just because some Jewish people will say there's a chapter where Lamech refers to himself in the third person. But that wouldn't qualify for this because it's clearly identifying two different locations. Whereas Lamech is speaking about his wives in the third person. So he doesn't say Lamech went to his wives from somewhere else. Whereas this is clearly establishing there's two locations. So it's good, you have identified a difficulty in the verse. Yes. Now. As so a Jew, a, yeah. my first point of call now is to go and see the old law, see what they all say. Okay. And your first part of call as a Christian is to say, Jesus! 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 My, my, my first call of the law, um, my first, first port of port call, of call yes. is to establish from the scripture. Okay. So now this is the divine is very, very ambiguous. And we have a difficulty so, in the verse. Okay. What is your, what, how are you going to now try to resolve this verse? How do we resolve it? Yes, try well, to resolve it. Well, because initially, of course, you don't have an oral law yes. where God gave you rules of how to resolve but it. What we're so how are you going to do it? Well, in terms of we will then establish it from the person who came, which was the Messiah, which you reject. Because then we understand. Did I, did I tell you? you? You have it on record, yeah, everyone? Well, well, my lady piece. Yes. My lady piece. Okay. okay. Uh, but but, but we away. established that there was two, because if we go to Amos 4.11, if you can read it for me. Oh, we really do like jumping around. Yeah, we, you, you used, it, we, our first port of call is to use scripture to interpret scripture. We don't go outside of the scripture. How do you use ambiguous parts of scripture to, to explain okay. other ambiguous parts of scripture? Well, according to you, it's ambiguous. But we're identifying a port of call to establish first from the scripture, which we know, because obviously Moses wrote the Torah. So what's chapter in Amos? 4.11. Amos 4, chapter 11. I have wrought destruction among you, that's when God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. You have become like a brand plucked from Bethel. Yeah, that's when God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. You have become like a brand plucked from burning, yet you have not turned back to me, declares the Lord. 
So, repeat that passage one more time. You have brought destruction among you. That's when God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. You have become like... Ah, I see what you're doing here. You have become like a brand packed from burning. Let him not turn back to me, declares the Lord. So, God is speaking. Yes. And he said what? And then he talks about himself in the third person. So, he's talking about himself in the third person. Oh, well, yeah. So, we see in 1924, there's God in two locations. But then... The, God seems to refer back to that incident and then for some reason talk to himself in the third person. Oh. By himself in the third person. Said, and we're still waiting for the location of that third angel. You want, ah, you want to tell me. You want to tell me a very big, in, 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 uh, in, Ju in Judaism we call this a chedosh. Okay. Like uh, something we would never have known before. And you are, this is the news, okay? This is the headline. The third angel that was missing in scripture did not go up to heaven and in fact the third angel himself is the person talking over here when he says I have brought destruction among you even though it's clear, okay I have brought destruction among you and it's the angel who who brought down the fire of brimstone right is that what it's, you want to say it's an angel it's an angel well not God. well clearly in that verse that will I reiterate we see the Lord appears to Abraham and then there are three men and okay. then two of them seem to disappear to Sodom and Gomorrah okay and one of the men is called the Lord whoa, let me just see whoa, 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 whoa. let me just one get the le let me them. let me just get the verse I don't like where this is going well you of course he won't <laughs> and you are telling me that one of the men was called the Lord where do you have this where do you have this, Mr. Boy? I, I believe paper is your first name. Go to um, 1813, <laughs> verse 13. Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah Sorry, laugh? Can we repeat that again? Then the Lord said to Abraham. So the Lord, so now, you said from verse 1, it was a vision. Then now, somehow, the three men came. Then the Lord somehow had to give a vision to Abraham and his wife. Three times already defeated Oh, sorry, say to Abraham. And four, Another six, vision. So let's look in context. Yeah. Verse okay. nine, beginning of the paragraph. Okay. They said to him, "Where is your wife, Sarah?" From you, what verse are you going from? from verse nine. Beginning okay. Of the paragraph. Yep. So they said. So that's the three men, right? They said to him, Bro, "Where is your wife, Sarah?" The hold in the tent. I there, there in the tent. Okay, that's where Sarah is. I Sarah's gonna have a son next year. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sarah, your wife. And the Lord said to Abraham, Why does Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I in truth bear a child old as I am? So is there anything too old just for the Lord? So I will return to you at the same reason. So, so, so you're son. saying when it says the Lord appears or Lord spoke, it was a vision. Then we the see the com they're the conversating with the three people. Yeah. Then Sarah laughs and then he has another vision again saying so God is giving him a vision to say why did Sarah laugh or do we accept that they Sarah laughed in the presence of these three men and the Lord wants one of them and then he said why is she laughing because you're saying then well, let's say your interpretation they're talking to the men Sarah okay. laughs and then Abraham has a, a vision from God again to say why is Sarah laughing yes that's exactly what it says is happening here okay and we're still waiting for this identity of the third person who apparently to you went to heaven but according to the Mishnah they went to the heaven but not in the script in, in uh, the written Torah but of course because you don't have, you don't believe that the the oral law is any true interpretation of the Torah everything that we have argued about or discussed so far is irrelevant and has no bearing on anything for a very simple reason okay we argue fundamentally on a general premise which is and that you can tell from our religions. Yeah. I am a Jew. Yes. And I, as my general premise, believe that the oral law is true. Okay. It comes from God and that and all these different facets of the oral law are all true and are all divine. Of divine origin. And Paperboy over here, Mr. Paperboy, he is a Christian and he does not believe that the oral law is true or any of that is true. And instead, he has a New Testament, a Greek Testament, whatever you want to call it, 
Okay, and he has a trinity, and he has a new messiah and things. And he wants to prove to me, for my own law, which he doesn't even believe in, as a valid. But we're piece looking of at we're looking at from the against, Hebrew Bible. That, that goes against Christianity. Yes. That, that, that was the whole idea in Isaiah 53. Okay, with the because that he wants because to my do. my point was as well because uh, until Maimonides. Yes. In classical Judaism, there was no, uh, there was no form of, because obviously you say that the Yigdal, that God has no form, no had, God, God has no body God parts. But in earlier awful. Judaism, there was no rhetoric against this type of thinking. There was no, there, Maimonides no. established because, the fight because, against Adrophomorphism. Because the Mishnah in Sanhedrin says yes. that, that, that if you say that God is physical, then you have no portion in the world to come. Yes, but that's clearly established much later. No, that's in the Mishnah. Okay. That's very so, early. That's a Tanaic let's, source. Let's go. You should know that. Let's go to Daniel. That's your whole. Let's go to. There's on Dead Show in this uh, in this film. Let's go to De Daniel Seven. What's the time, by the way? Uh, five thirty. Okay, good. We've got lots of time. Yes. So let's go to Daniel Seven. Daniel thirty. But I hope everyone realizes that this argument is pointless okay. because of our fundamental argument in a general premise. And unless we actually go into addressing what's true, the oral law or the New Testament, then this everything we argue about is nonsense. I, actually, wait, before we jump to that, let me give you another verse because we kind of jumped off the Messiah. But I'd like the audience to engage with what we're saying. We clearly see that the scripture is saying something which Josh here is finding very difficult to interpret. So then he, they have to go into the Mishnah or the Talmud. Oh, no. oh, so what we clearly see, and when I said to him from the start, that rabbinical or Judaism has been evolutionary because not everyone has always agreed. So as rabbis have come down the line, people have clarified things from before. So it's a sense of progressiveness within Judaism. So that's why when we get to the time of Maimonides, he establishes the 13 articles of faith. He establishes firmly the Yigdal. But even he, when he first came, was not fully accepted by the Jewish community. It was only centuries later then it became orthodoxy. But nowhere along the line was yes. the 13 principles of faith ever disputed. Yes, but what I'm saying, it may have Many been, parts of the it may have been in the in Talmud, that. of course, but we're exactly. saying when he came, because you, he established the 13 articles, that's why we say he established the 13 articles of faith. They may have been within the Mishnah and the Talmud, but he established it. So therefore, what rabbinical... Do what, rabbinical what, what do you mean when you say he established it? Because he it? was a philosopher. Yes, he was. And he then wrote in terms of anthropomorphism and also in terms of what orthodox uh, Judaism believes. Because I will reference you, for example, like things from classical sources about what the earliest Jews believed. So that's why I'm going to present that in a second. But if you can quickly go to Micah 5 2. Ah, I remember this one. Yes. <laughs> what, what, what was that prophet was wrestling with the Lord? He was wrestling with the Lord. Great. Oh, um, um, Jacob. So, so who was the who was the person he was wrestling? Irrelevant with? to the discussion. It's, it's, it's relevant, though. Irrelevant we, we to can the discussion. Because you said he's not physical. <laughs> Yeah, but let's go to, let's to the discussion. <laughs> let's go to and, Micah 5. And, 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 and according to your yeah, theology, that, that, you have, you have, you have a contradiction that. because you said, you, you said God is not physical. No, no, one second. Let me, let me make my point and let me carry on. We've got to listen to him. No, no, one yeah, second. Just like with the black Hebrew, it's like came six months ago. Let me say something and then carry on. I'm just wanting to think about something. We'll go on to that point. No, 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 another one. I want to say something, yeah? We don't listen to people who interrupt the discussion. God said in Tanakh, yeah? It says, we cannot see God. God and leave. You can't see his face and leave, yeah? But also the scripture says Moses was speaking to him face to face. So how would you explain that? 
Yeah, we'll go. How to would that. you explain that then? So it's a cost of Yeah. So let's go to Micah Five Two. So let's we'll, then we'll go to Micah Five Two. Then as I can do that one up. Yeah, next time. Do you want me to get a black keeper in the lights here? Let's go. It's up to you. I'm gonna deal with him as well if you bring it. Do you want me to get a black keeper in the Go bring your rabbi. Go bring your. Let's go to Micah. Go bring your allers. Let's go to Micah Five Two. Let's go to Micah. Let's go to Micah. There will be no more sense in this discussion. Because and you are Bethlehem of Ephrath. Okay. Bethlehem, Ephrath. The least among the clans of Judah. Of Judah. From you, one shall come forth. Ah, from you. From, from you. Judah. From yeah. Judah. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Continue. This is right against you, by the way. Okay. <laughs> from you, one shall come forth to rule Israel to me. When his origin is from of old, from ancient times. Truly, truly, he will leave them helpless until she who is to bear has born. Then the rest of his countrymen shall return to the children of Israel. So... We're seeing that the ruler or the Messiah will have to come from Judah. From Judah. Now, if he's going to come, can you tell me who now is from the line of David? I cannot. You, you cannot. Know why? Why? Because we lost the tradition as ah. to which tribe we are from. So how would you know when the Messiah comes if he's from the line of David? Ah, well, if you want to know how we will know who the Messiah is, then we'll have to look in all the places. In Isaiah and Ezekiel, where he ta where, yes, we'll take a break. Where he tells us exactly. So how he's we going to learn. come and tell you, hey, I'm the Messiah. I'm from the line of Judah. That's the same thing Muhammad did to the Muslims. He said, I have that, seen. Uh, so how would you Jesus know? Did. So how would you know? That, so uh, we they all do. So now it's not the same. It's so how would happens. you know he's from the line of David? How will we know he's from the line of David? As you said, you don't know what tribes people are from. So how would you establish he's from the line of David? Good question. Okay. Good question. So now uh, you said you said with Jesus he did the same thing. I started off with Genesis 49:10, which told you when Shiloh had to come back from the time he had to come by before the scepter departed from Judah. However, but wait, when Herod came, the scepter wait, had already departed from Judah. Wait, the Mac no. The kings were what, not from Herod, Judah. Herod was a king and it said the lawgiver so when we see in the first century the power of capital punishment was taken from the Sanhedrin yes. by the Roman Empire we also see in Malachi 3 1 that says the Lord will visit his temple and we know the temple has disappeared it's no longer you say yes. it will be rebuilt That's what and then the Messiah says. will come you for my life? we'll look at Ezekiel in a second so now we're seeing a timeline because we can also see from the Qumran community, you know the Qumran community, I've heard of them. the Essenes. Yes. They wrote about the Messiah coming, and they said he he had to come between the 10th century BC and the second century uh, AD. Yeah. So these are your earliest Jews talking we, about. We hold the Essenes. But I'm saying, because this is why I said what, and I have to find that quote, I will find it, give me a second, about Maimonides. But we're, that's why I said Judaism has become now progressive. Now let me find that quote that I said I will find for you. We're not progressive. Let me find that quote for you. That's what the reformed Jews want to say. They want to say it's moved with times. Honestly. But like one of those barristers in a court you know, that says that 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 says uh, that, that brings a piece of evidence that he doesn't believe in, that he doesn't believe in fraud himself. He brings a witness, for example, and that, and he says, "Listen to this witness. He clearly says this thing." Okay, and you know, for, uh, and then the judge says, "But but surely the witness did did, did that. But surely discredits you for being able to use it. To use him." He says, "No, no, I'm going to use it for this, but not for that." You no, because what I'm saying to you is because that, but see, no, because I'm saying to you that we have the evidence, the and then there's from the scripture of a timeline, and that the when you're when, what that when and when your rabbis even confirm that the timeline has passed, and now as Jews you just have to pray and be good Jews. Therefore, they understood that there was a timeline stated within the. Uh, written Torah, what but they, I don't know let me. Saying. That's why I said let me find the what the um, the, uh, the text. Hey, 
Could you hold on for about 30 seconds? Yeah, that's fine. Right. Let's go turn over here. Oh, hello. This fat chick. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Okay, so I've I've now found it. Ah, right. We go to the Babylonian Talmud, 1997a. Rab said, all the predestined dates for redemption have passed. And the matter now depends only on repentance and good deeds. Our, at least, if Israel repent, they will be redeemed. If not, they will not be redeemed. So therefore, this is talking about the Messiah. Uh, it will take me too long to find other um, references. But clearly it says, all the predestined dates have passed. How could the predestined dates pass if because there wasn't were... a specific time period? Oh, so of course, there were specific dates. Okay, okay. what were Wait, the dates? Look. One second. Yes. We're going to have to say, now that we see this Talmudic statement, we're going to have to say as follows. If it's the, the general premise stated here mm -hmm. is that there, are, there, were, there were specific dates, predestined dates, for the, when the redemption is supposed to happen. Which was when? Right? Now, right. now, it doesn't tell us when those times are, and we could argue till the sun goes down until where, until what those are. However, however, what we clearly see is that the, that, that he, Rav is saying that now that they have passed, it only rests on, on but how uh, would he on, know on, it's on passed? Us repenting. How, how would he know it's passed? Yes. So obviously he knows what the predestined type dates are, and he can see well those so dates are passed. So it can't be now. The predestined date can't be now because he said it's passed. Well, yeah. So the therefore, that means he understood there was a time frame. Yes. Yeah. So therefore, that's why I started with Genesis 49:10. The Shiloh had to come before the scepter, the rod departed. Okay. And obviously now we gave you Malachi 3. One, but you said that's going to happen in the future when the temple's rebuilt. Yeah. But the Messiah was supposed to come before then. That's what I referenced yes, to you. Of course, the Messiah was supposed the to come. The Qumran community the, of the, the Essenes who predicted well, the timeline second. from between the, 10 uh, BC and 2 CE. So therefore, that's why I'm asking you: What was the time frame he was supposed to come originally? I'll tell you this: the original yeah. plan was that Moses was supposed to come down with the tablets. Okay. Okay. Okay, give everyone the, give, okay, the people have got the Torah and then they all go into the land of Israel straight away and they, they uh, and then and then Moses was, sorry, and then um, and then the Messiah was supposed to reveal himself at that point okay, that was the original plan so show now, me according now, to what he was supposed to come at that point because some people said David was the Messiah so therefore that's later than that da da in the oral law, in other places, and I, I don't know them off the top of my head, okay. I'm sorry. Um, I also don't have a phone to look it up. Yeah. Um, it says that, um, that in, 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 in every generation... So, so, so just somebody, to cut you off there, yes. how could the Messiah come after Moses when he's supposed to come from the line of David? I didn't say he was going to be, he was going to be Moses. Okay. No, I no, but you said around that time. At that... Ah, that's what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, so basically, the the requirement of him to come from the house of David only came after David himself had died. After there was already a Davidic dynasty. So you couldn't have now come it before. Had to come, now so it you're had saying to come from David. So then you're but saying before that. It okay. Didn't have to. So then isn't that some sort of again what I refer to this kind of progressive interpretation? You're saying he's supposed to come uh -oh. then. Now David. Well, now, because now, um, now Hezekiah was also somebody who could have who could have become the Messiah. Okay. Now, the, the, what I was about to say was, ev in every generation, yeah. okay, um, there's always somebody who could have been, who could somebody who could be the Messiah. Okay. okay? There's always somebody According who could be. According to the scripture or the oral Torah. The oral Torah the oral says Torah. it, and okay. it learns it out from something. So how come the oral now, Torah is so confusing? Because if yeah. it's very clear. You said it could have been this person, it could have been that person, it could have been that person. I.e., whichever generation is worthy okay. of having the Messiah come, of, the, of having the Messiah come, that will be the generation where the Messiah will come. So how do you know, again, that's what I said, who is from the line of David? Because if this person has to come from the line of David, well, how you, do you I establish? So what does the Oral Torah say? Because therefore you're looking for someone that you cannot establish, because there has to be a criteria then. So there are criteria. Such as? 
such as he's going to he's he's, he's going to bring all the Jews to the land of Israel somehow. Yeah, but we're saying to somehow know that he's, he's from the line of David, because he could be a false prophet that does that. Because that's what Muslims do. They say Muhammad saw an angel in a cave. He is a new prophet. They're following him. So how do you know? that this person, because that's an essential criteria, he has to come from the line of David. First of all, it's very important to note that the Messiah will be a God-fearing person. He's going to be somebody who, fo who follows who, the Torah. Who, who follows the Torah, yeah. he is extremely devout, very okay. pious. Okay, we know that because it says in Isaiah chapter 11 verse 3, right? Yep. Now, what the Oral Law tells us is mm -hmm. that we will know the Messiah based on the things that he did. Okay. Okay, he, has to, he has to prove himself. We don't just accept him straight away. So when the Messiah he comes, is himself. he coming on a donkey or in the clouds? What are you saying? Have you, have you, when he arrives, because according to the Oral that's, Torah... That's not the point. The point here is, yeah. all, of the, all of the things that the, the Bible stresses yeah. is going to be the things that the Messiah is going to do, yeah. those are those things he's proving himself by doing by accomplishing every if he accomplishes every one of these things okay then he has proven himself so that that how does he prove he's from the line himself. of david because again assume, how do you know a modern day muhammad doesn't come do all these things but because he, he can't prove he's from the line of david you're following him and this that, is a false prophet one of the ah, i'll tell you one of the things yeah okay that, that it says about the Messiah is he happens to be a direct descendant of David. However, oh, yeah. however, okay, it doesn't say, it never tells us that, 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 that this is going to be something he does. He's going to do being the descendant of David. It tells us that this descendant of David is going to do certain things. Okay. And by doing those things, we will know that he is so the therefore, Messiah. So therefore, so, a false but, prophet so, could come and do these things to deceive the Jews because that is the essential part. He could tick all the boxes apart from this one because you have no criteria. God won't let that happen. Well, God, apparently God, you're still waiting for the God, Messiah and God, God has let it happen. No, God, no, that's not what I said. Yeah. God will not allow it to happen that somebody fulfills all of the criteria of the, of the Messiah, yeah. okay? And then we believe in him and it turns out that he's actually not the Messiah. But if someone, if there's 10 criteria, the person is going to if there's 10 criteria, yeah. he could achieve nine. So you said God won't let him achieve the tenth. So I'm yes. saying the tenth is from the line of David. So God won't let that be established. But I, I'm I saying to you, I, I how is he going to prove I, that he's so, from the line so of David? Clearly, if there's, if there's, it, let's say, okay, let's go according to your premise. Yeah. That being a, a direct descendant of, the, of of David is one of the criteria. Uh, is one of the things that he has to prove himself. Okay. Okay. If it's it, it, okay, then if that would be the case, then obviously there would have to be a way of proving it. The very fact that there is no way of proving okay. the Old Testament of David shows that your premise is wrong. That that's not one of the criteria. Uh, so, so, yeah, no, that's it, what so, it says in the scripture. No, no, he, no, no. The root it, so of Jesse. It's, 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 it's not one of the things that, uh, that, 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 that he has to prove himself for, because it's impossible to prove But that's himself. what the, the scripture says, he will be from the root of Jesse. Yes, so he happens to be from the root of Jesse. Yes. Okay. But that doesn't mean that he that, 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 that he has to prove himself to be from the okay. root of Jesse. So it happens to be. He, he uh, uh, um, re ret retrospect re retroactively. Okay. Okay. From the fact he was able to fulfill all these criteria, he must be the true Messiah. Okay. And obviously, it turns out that he was. So let's go to Daniel. So, uh, so the, 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 those functions are the things that he's going to, okay. he's going to prove himself and it, are yeah. he's going to usher in an era of world peace, yep. end all hatred, oppression, suffering and disease, as we see in these places. Okay. Isaiah 2, 4 and Isaiah 11, 6. Okay. We're going to spread the universal knowledge of the God of Israel, which will unite humanity as one, yep. as we see in Jeremiah 31, 33, Isaiah 11, 9 and Zechariah 14, 6, 14, 14 9. Okay, he's going to cause all the Jews to be in the land of Israel, or that's just going to be the fact that okay. it is. All the Jews I just are... seen that Zechariah thing. Let's look yeah. at the book of Zechariah. Book you just finish the list. Okay, that's just right. finish the list. Um, that the Jew, all the Jews will be in the land of Israel. Jeremiah sixteen fifteen, Jeremiah twenty three seven to eight, Ezekiel thirty seven twenty one, Isaiah eleven twelve, and Isaiah forty three five to six. Okay. And he's going to rebuild the temple in Israel, as we see in Ezekiel 37, 26 to 28, and Ezekiel chapters 40 to 48. Okay, so now, because what I've shown you, 
your 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 oh, from your from your tour. I forgot something. What's this that? is the important Elijah will come. Will come him. back before the Messiah is coming. Your law says he's gonna come three days before and announce the Messiah is coming. Okay. Okay. That's how we know he's the Messiah. Okay, but yeah, so okay, that's fine. But of course. Now I sorry, I apologize. As I was saying, um lost my train of thought. I should have checked my notes before I started, so I didn't make a mistake. So as I was saying, so when the most look, actually let's go to Daniel 7, 13. I would like to go to verse 11. Yeah. I looked on. Then because of the arrogant words that the horn spoke, the beast was killed as I looked on. Its body was destroyed and it was consigned to the flames. The dominion of the other beasts was taken away, but an extension of life was given to them for a time and season. As I looked on in the night vision, one like a human being came with the clouds of heaven. He Just reached to stop the... you there. When it says one like, what does that mean? I don't know. Okay, continue. He reached the Ancient of Days. I would assume, by the way, that one like a human being is not actually a human being, but okay. looks like a human being. Okay. I okay. would assume that's what it means. All right. I don't know. I don't have authority to interpret. Okay. I don't... But it seems so... like a simile. Yeah, it seems like it. Okay. Uh, he reached the Ancient of Days and was presented to him. To read in glory and kingship were given to him. All people of the nations of every language must serve him. His dominion is never lasting dominion that shall not pass away. And his kingship one that shall not be destroyed. So what do you take from that verse? This will be the Messiah. But then you just said that it's not a human. So I must be wrong, it's not the Messiah. Okay. <laughs> so, well, it's either it is or it isn't. Well, I was wrong. Because, was because, on first verse, because the Messiah is also going to be a ruler of all the nations. And that's why, for example, when we look to Micah 5.2, it says the ruler. And we know the Messiah is going to bring world peace. Okay. And now this verse is talking about a person who's going to come and descend and all the nations will serve him. I and his say king. Not a person. I'm the saying the person uh, who it is. Because it looks like a, a person. I didn't it's say it's like a, a human, person. I said it's a person. A person is someone who has self consciousness and awareness. So it doesn't have to be a human. But this. Do you have. Uh, do, do you have. Do you have if we look up. Yes, yeah. the commentary is say on this verse. No problem. And as I told you, rabbinical Judaism seems to progress and keep changing their minds yeah. over uh, never, what the scripture didn't. means. No, they didn't. Okay, let's go to Daniel 7. They think that's what happens if misunderstood. Because the, because the your time. your your uh, rabbi Akiva yes. said the same thing as you and they told him not to say that because that would be could lead to heresy. Mm. There you go. So, because they will believe to the belief in Je uh, of Yeshua. So let's go and look at your uh, and find that Daniel seven. Let's try Rashi. He's the most primary commentator. This is the And to that person, uh, he gave the dominion of the nations. Demokhaius. He looks like an animal. No, no. He's compared to an animal. Israel Dima given Adam. And the Jews are compared to a person. Al Shahim and Muslim Muslim. I have no idea what that first word means, but the second word is perfect. They are no, they're they are humble and perfect, that's what it is. Okay. To know you, no, we also, we will not remove this. So this isn't on the word that we want. So let's try so the commentator. Me... Anyone else? See if there's one with English on it. I don't think they have English to Russia and Dalian. So you can read it too. Yeah, because there's one that they say something very important. Only one? Uh, let me go to. Uh, the... Really? They call me the Hulk? Why? <laughs> <laughs> because I think you turn into something. Envious green for envy because we want to just have your knowledge. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> the last thing I heard was when was there was a debate I had with Hamza and they called it Taming the Jew, which I thought, well, okay. that's a bit I, telling I, about I, what kind of these people are. I mean, 
that's based on that's sell, based on a Nazi propaganda. Sell, yeah, but that's but they're not trying to promote it to other people. They're trying to specifically break you down. That you can't say that a phrase that was always used by the Nazis, taming the Jew, was a was was, was from was, was from Der Sturmer, um, and Streicher had it in his uh, in, in his in his um, his propaganda newspaper the whole time. You can't say that now using that phrase is not going to have some sort of um, connotations. Okay, I found it. It's in the it's in the midrash. So our that, our that, Alexandri that, that, that would be that would be like uh, that would be like if somebody said a phrase that was used as a negative thing against black people doing the slavery nowadays and said oh there's there's no racist connotations in that it's the same thing. So we'll go back to this. So we go to the midrash and it says our Alexandri said ah Alexandri said I just should raise the following contradiction is it an either or ah, the following contradiction contradiction okay. Yes. It is, it, do you know what it means in the Talmud when he says yeah, well, going to they explain what it is? They're, they, ex they're going to try to reconcile. Yeah, exactly. So, just so we know written, that there's a contradiction. I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. Hasten and in its time contradict. I, don't, I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. Hasten and in its time contradict each other. Ah, fine. I, if they will so, be worthy, I will hasten it. And if not, they must wait till the appointed time will come. All right. So it says, Our Joshua written in Daniel 7.13 Behold with the clouds of heaven come one like a son of man and it is also written in Zechariah 9.9 Lowly and riding upon an ass i.e. if they will be worthy will he will come the upon the clouds of heaven, of heaven. And if, if not, not he will come, come upon an ass, ass. So we saw Jesus coming to Jerusalem on, a don uh, on an donkey. ass Who on says? a donkey That's what we have in our scripture But what I'm saying here is that as a Jew, you say the Messiah has to fulfill everything all at once. And this is why they don't accept Jesus, because they'll say, well, you ha he didn't fulfill everything at once. Because yeah, he didn't fulfill everything. We say Jesus will come a second time to fulfill what he hasn't done the first time. But this is why you say, no, it's all at once. But then you find a contradiction which says he will come either on the clouds or riding on the donkey. Depending on what we're worthy for. Depending, depending on whether or not so, they are so this is why it's a contradiction because Jesus came on the cloud um, sorry on the um, on the donkey worthy, worthy no because in as within Judaism if a king comes riding on a donkey it means it's a sign of peace so obviously God's mercy came before before his wrath because we know when Jesus comes the second time that's when <laughs> there'll be more wrath and this is why we find contradictions that they're saying it's a contradiction and they'll say well They've now revised it to say if we are good, he will come on an ass, or if no, we're bad, no, he's not it's revising it. He's explaining how to understand this apparent contradiction. Apparent. So yes. therefore, we, what we're saying we, the, the, is the, that the, the Messiah we, didn't we, have to come we all at once. Because even if we look at the Qumran community, they also said the same thing. And this is one of the oldest Jewish communities. So we can go into, that's why I say rabbinical Judaism and the interpretation has progressed because we can look at the Essenes that we have the writings from the Dead Sea, um, the Qumran caves. But those are from, the, that's from the Northern Kingdom, no? But they were still Jews. No, they didn't, they weren't. They were following idolatry up there in the North. They were still, they were Jews. Yeah, they were Jews, yes. but they weren't and religious. They, and they, they, were, they were using the that's Torah. Why the, that's and why the, the Assyrians got them when they did. Again, so we see from earliest Jewish thoughts that there was an idea or a concept that the Messiah will come and fulfill th these two things, not that it had to be achieved all at once. We don't prove anything from the Northern Kingdom, and that it would be ridiculous to try to do that. So, to try to prove from the Northern but Kingdom. what I'm trying to Kingdom say is progressively, we've seen an evolution in Judaism, Judaism's thought, because as you said, the one like a son of man cannot be a human. So therefore you're saying that the Messiah is not a human. How do you reconcile that? Well, he just reconciled it, didn't he? Because if we look at your the yeah, earliest yeah. text, because in early Judaism, have you heard of the two thrones, um, the two powers in heaven? No. Okay, I, I, I won't go into it. But basically, earliest think, rabbinical thinking, there were thoughts that the Messiah may have divine attributes based on this because we can clearly use our logic that's why when you read it the first thing you said 
I'll, I'll have to find it. May, I'll, we'll pull it on the on the video. But it's not another what I'm, but what I'm saying, it. what I'm saying to you is this: we clearly see. I read you the verse, and the first thing you said was, "It can't be a man because it it says one like yes. a man," and this is how the text should be interpreted. Yes. So therefore, if not for the fact that there's another verse that that, that would seem to contradict it. Now that you have two no, no. verses, now that you have two verses, it doesn't see, contradict. I'll tell why? you why. Because one, they're talking about the essence of this person, whether he is a human or not. The other is talking about how this person will come. So the contradiction, we, you let's can see say. Let's the verses one more time. All right. Oh, the clouds of heaven come. One came. Right. Because then this is what led to early Jews, Jewish communities, to believe that the Messiah will have divine powers because of this, this um, Daniel 7, 14, 13 and 14. Because it clearly says one like the Son of Man, so therefore it can't be a man. It's something that has an appearance. And let me just show you something very, quick, very quickly. We'll go to your Jewish encyclopedia. Jewish encyclopedia. Yeah, it's just a Jewish encyclopedia. <laughs> In Daniel 7.13, the passage in it, which occurs in Biblical Aramaic, it certainly connotes a human being. Many see a messianic significance in this verse, but in all probability, the reference is to an angel with a human appearance, perhaps Michael. Yeah. So now we see that this apparent angel would do the same things as the Messiah. Because remember, Rab Rabbi Akiva thought initially I, I can find a, we'll put the reference on the video he says that this was a uh, reference to the Messiah yeah. but then how can but then they said it would lead to heresy so he was to refrain from saying that but we see even in your Jewish encyclopedia they're saying it was an angel so how can your rabbi who knows would have that same interpretation to understand it wasn't a human being say it was the Messiah because they knew from earlier on that the Mes they associated divine properties with the Messiah. It's only later on through the revisions of Judaism then they've kind of moved away from that thinking. So as I said I'll put the link up, the reference, so then if your earliest rabbi thought this was the Messiah but even the Jewish encyclopedia says it's not a human it must be an angel how did he link the two? Is not a valid yeah, but I'm saying reference. this can be referenced, but I'm just giving you a summary from your own sources because it can be backed up with other opinions, but I don't have every reference upon me, so I have to give you a quick summary. Okay. So I'm saying to you, the earliest thought there was no problem with the Messiah having divine properties. It's only later on that it got revised and then it's now just a human person because you even said, oh, it's the Messiah. But then when I corrected you and say, hold on, initially you said it wasn't a human. Yeah. Now you've then kind of now become more thoughtful in terms of, yes, how do we get around this? Because that is the exact same thinking early Jews had as well. It was probably, it's a problematic verse. Okay. So on that note, let's, um, we can do a wrap up. Hold on one second. Just think. Just think it. <laughs> That's fine. Next time you come in the summer, we can have part three. <laughs> well, he's clearly d deep in thought, but next time we can go yeah, into. Right. So you're things. saying you're saying as follows. Yeah. You're saying Rabbi Akiva said this verse the first the the first to the Messiah. Yeah. I, I would I would like to see the exact words. Yeah. There's always a hint into that. Okay. There's always you can always see more when you see the actual words. Um, and you're saying that the other rabbis said to Rabbi Akiva, if you say that, it might lead to heresy. Well, in so many words, yes. It okay. wasn't accepted. Right. So, there's two different ways of looking at it. Mm. Either, what you're say either they're saying, and I, we don't want to go down this route because it's Rabbi Akiva, that Rabbi Akiva himself was saying something about heresy. And we don't want to go down that route for reasons, and I'm not going to go into it. Um, or you can say that there would be a way of misunderstanding with what Rabbi Akiva said, and the rabbis were worried about happening that would cause heresy. Okay. Okay? 
Now, that does not necessarily mean that that uh, that, the, that that would be that the the best way of understanding of our keeper is not a way that will lead to heresy. Now, I don't know what that best way is, but I haven't seen his words. Yeah. It always has to be very precise in the wording of these sorts of things. Yeah, I can't remember the reference off the top of my head, that's why I've not so, put it, but I've tried to give you... So I would have to, it'll take too long for me have, to find yeah. it. So we would have to see the words yeah. be very precise. God bless yeah. you, brother. So, yeah, on that note, we can... Again, that we do have a nice speaking to Josh he's a very civil person and gives very honest answers um, so next time you're here in summer we can obviously revisit this and talk about if, does God have a plurality within within him yeah because um, it will take it'll be a long conversation so we can do that the next time um, but yes obviously you'll rewatch this video and ponder because clearly what we I've tried to show is that from scripture there's a clear timeline and even within the old Torah, they admit that there was a predestined time which has now passed. So if something has passed, that they, that means that they were aware of a criteria of when it should have happened. So clearly we're saying Jesus fulfilled that because we see from Genesis 4 to 9, 10, it said the septum will not depart until Shiloh comes. And also Malachi 3, 1, it says the messenger of the covenant, who will be the Messiah, will, and then who prepares the way for the temple. But obviously, his interpretation is while the temple will be, re re be, re be, well, will be rebuilt in the future whereas I've said why well, it had to become before the second temple was destroyed so we clearly see the differences is where the Christians seem to actually be sticking to what the written Torah says where, yeah, where Jew, the oral yes so the oral Torah is now being given a significance over the written even no. though the written is quite quite oh, clear no, or to clear. use it to interpret because i've given that's verses why the, that's why god gave it to us god well this gave is us the oral law to explain the written but as we can see the christian understanding from the written torah is very clear when we looked at this story of abraham josh then said verse one was about a vision then we saw a conversation with three men and then the one of the men replies to abraham about why is sarah laughing but then this would have to be another vision and we're jumping backwards and forwards. It's God. It's yes, it would have been through a vision again. Because you said when God spoke, it was through a vision. So therefore we have God, a when vision. When it says that it's a vision, i.e. God appears, that's yeah. a vision. Or when we can take God spoke, or we or we can take a simpler a vision. We can take a voice. simpler approach that God was there and he was one of the three people. And then when he heard Sarah that's laugh, simple at all. and when he when he heard Sarah laugh, he replied. And then we saw the two people go to Sodom and Gomorrah and then the Lord was still on earth and rained down fire and brimstone from the Lord that was in heaven. It's very linear. But you will say it's very confusing. We have to jump forward 20 verses, skip back five verses and then the grammar is very confusing. Now that doesn't sound simple to me. Who said the Torah was simple? So therefore, you said my explanation was not simple, no, I didn't say but then you're I saying... I didn't say your thing wasn't simple. I said that I'm your saying explanation was very linear and simple. Whereas you're oh, saying, let's jump forward 20, go back 5. Because what you want to do is you want to say that God is a man. And this was always going to be your conclusion. No matter okay. what was said here today, this was always going to be the conclusion. As I said near the beginning, Paperboy was always going to say, as all Christians do, every single page of the Torah is pointing to Jesus and that he's God and that he's the Messiah. Right? God is three instead of one. All of the same lines. And true to my word, Paperboy did exactly that. Did I not tell you? Did I tell you? Of course I told you. Well, we will obviously, again, re when Josh comes back, we will revisit this. Because clearly, when we got to Daniel 7, he was quite stumped about how he then said it was about the Messiah, but then the Messiah wasn't a human. So he was very deep in thought about that. But next time you come, we can go into it further. You can do some research, and then we can have a further discussion. So it was All a pleasure right. speaking with you, Dan. Uh, and cut. <laughs>